Hey everyone, Thoughts Leaf here with 5987 Galaxia representing Israel here in the Houston Championship. We got to check out this amazing robot here. Really passive uh, ro rollers for their game pieces, also a cube intake. And here to talk about it is Emma, David, and Ofri as the operator for the robot. Really excited to go through the robot here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Get your off-season events an additional 25 to 100% more viewership by streaming it on FUN. We'll donate our Twitch or YouTube channel and help promote your event. Contact admin at firstupdatesnow.com to reserve your off-season date. All right, David, now walk me through your intake. It seems like this intake is very similar to 2022, so explain that with me. Yes, you're correct. In a prototype uh, progress, we saw that the intake is very similar. The cubes are very similar to the uh, balls last year, so we did uh, some prototype, and we saw that the intake from last year was very good for us. So we did some modifications to show that it will be very good and uh, durable. For example, we have here a very durable structure, as you can see. And the major thing that we did from last year is that we first intake the cube inside and then only center it in the robot because we saw that the cube has a very high friction with the carpet. So we put polycarbonate floor and HDP walls to make it slide easier. Can we see that uh, flow? Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's really smooth. I do want to ask this panel right here is that just to make sure that your arm doesn't hit into the intake and stuff no it was because it as you can see it's a little bit slighted because we didn't want it to go the cube go up because okay it we, uh, when we did it like straight it went up for us and we didn't want that in our robot right now talk to me about your your gripper over here is it a passive wheel system especially with the cones is it does it allow the cones to be down at first we did it with uh, so it can move, but as we w went on with the season, we saw that it more hurt us than help us. Okay. Because we initially thought that we will do an intake that can do both cones and cubes. Was as we prototyped, we saw that uh, intake cube will be a better choice for us. Right. And can I can we see how you do uh, ground pickup for cones? Because it seems like you have an intake for cubes, but how do you pick up cones? Okay, so we're doing from it. We're doing it from the double substation. Okay. You can see now how it will move. Now. So this is how the arm moves and it can go to the double substation and we have a lot of sensors that uh, will help us uh, maneuver and make sure that we will intake the cone correctly. So you guys don't do a ground pickup with cones, just the... Yes, yeah, you're correct. We saw that it will be a lot harder and a lot more time to take cones than cubes. All right, now talk to me about more about your arm. It seems like you have a chain system. How does that... How are you having that run? This gearbox uh, runs the big part of our arm and the other gearbox runs the small part of the arm. This gearbox runs th these two sprockets, which then uh, turns the whole arm. As you can see, we have an encoder connected through it to the main hex, and the, for the second gearbox, we have another sprocket that goes uh, in here. It doesn't rotate the whole arm, and then it goes here and rotates the elbow. And another thing to ask is, it seems like you guys are using pneumatics, but is, are you only using pneumatics just for your gripper? Uh, yes, you're correct. Um, we when we did prototypes. We saw that uh, doing it with like rope or something more uh, like no pneumatics will be a lot harder. And uh, we talked about it with our electronic team, and we did that, and we and they said that adding pneumatics will not be hard for us, and we can do it easily. That sounds great and amazing thing to hear from your electronics team. Now I want to switch to you, Emma. You, uh, David mentioned about a bunch of sensors that you guys have. Now talk me through, there's, it seems like there's a sensor over here. Explain that with me. Yeah, this is a proximity sensor that returns a Boolean value. It, it, just tell, it, 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 it just tells us whether there's a cube in here. 
Uh, this lets us uh, stop the intake uh, when a cube enters because we had a uh, um, uh, in the past, uh, when, an, uh, when a cube entered the intake, but the drivers didn't notice that they went to take another cube, and that could uh, make a penalty. Right. Uh, so we had to make sure it wouldn't happen. Uh, it also uh, makes uh, it very easy, very easy for the drivers to see uh, when there's a cube in here. The, the LEDs start to blink, uh, and uh, so it makes uh, so it makes it really easy. There's a similar one in our gripper over here. Uh, it's another proximity sensor. Um, it's used when we take uh, cones from the double substation. Uh, the arm will move forward until uh, the cone is, is in the right place. Right. And then it will stop and, and signal the driver. Now, talk to me, talk to me about your presets. You seem like you have an absolute encoder. Tell me about your presets. How exactly do you have it set up? Well, we have two encoders here and here. So we know the angles of both of the, the shoulder and the elbow. Uh, that way, uh, we can calculate uh, how, well, within various kinematics, we can calculate uh, uh, how, uh, what angles the, each, each of them should be, mm -hmm. and make a profile from the current angle to the end angle. That you right. Want. And, and that way, uh, it's com that makes it completely automatic, and the drivers never have to drive it manually. Really unique robot. You guys are also using Swerve. Yeah. You guys are fast on the field. Tell me how that has been going for y'all. Uh, last year we made a swerve ourselves, but uh, we saw it, it took a lot, of, a lot of time out of the season. Uh, so this year we bought it, uh, because we wanted to focus on other things and other challenges. Right. But we did write the code ourselves. Uh, that was, uh, uh, because we, we thought that we could make a better code from the one that came with it, because uh, we could take from the internet. Uh, but we wanted to make it ourselves, because we wanted to, to gain more experience. Of course. Uh, it, was, it, it really went well. Uh, and uh, it works very well. Mm -hmm. We're glad that we bought it this year. Well, 5987, Galaxia, you guys have been doing so well so far. Here representing Israel, C congratulations on your success so far. Thank you And so good luck with, with you here at Worlds. Wish you guys the best of luck. Good luck. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.